My name is Sana Qureshi and I'll be teaching you economics for O level the code being 2281. This is going to be a crash course in economics. I would urge you to keep a lookout for the following things that you can see on the screen. Every time you see this sticky note that says definition, please be sure to note down that definition and understand that it is a co important concept. We would also urge you to that whenever you sit down for one of these classes, please be sure that you keep a notebook and a pen with you and make sure that you, uh, that you write down all the important definitions as well as key concepts. So anywhere that you see both of these logos as the definition logo or the key logo, please be sure to note it down. Um, then we'll be also doing past paper practice. We'll be doing MCQs as well as structured questions. We'll also be highlighting that the common mistakes that students tend to make in economics. We will now go over the exam structure. So I'm sure most of you know by now that your paper comprises of two papers, so paper one and paper two. Paper one will have MCQs and you'll have 30 MCQs with 45 minutes to finish your MCQs. And in paper two, you will have structured questions comprising of 90 marks and you will have two hours and 15 minutes to finish your exam. So paper one comprises of 30% of the final grade and 70% is the weightage for paper two. Also in paper one, all the questions are going to be compulsory. You have to attempt all of the MCQs that you get. And in paper two, the first question is going to be compulsory. And in the second section, you will choose three questions that you want to attempt from a set of six questions. So these units comprise of your economic syllabus. The, the first three, the basic economic problem, allocation of resources and uh, microeconomic decision makers form microeconomics, while government and the macroeconomy, economic development and international trade and globalization forms macroeconomics. So in this course, you should know all the definitions, the concepts, as well as the application of the concepts taught. So you should be able to apply all the things that you've learned onto scenarios or onto case studies that will be given to you on your exam paper. Needs and want. So need is a good or service that you require to survive and without one you will not be able to live. So food, water, shelter, clothing, all of these are examples of need. Whereas wants are things that you uh, desire and you want to have them, but you can definitely survive without them like designer clothes, designer shoes, a vacation, and etc. Um, the only thing that I would like you to sort of focus on right here is that when I say food is a need and not a want, that basically means that a fancy meal at a fancy restaurant will qualify as a want and not as a need. So I'm, I just want you to sort of focus on that. I hope that you can be, will be able to make this connection. Make sure that you write down the definitions wherever it is highlighted like so. It will help you later on when you're reviewing your course. Limited resources. So limited resources are materials that you need to make goods and services. Um, resources are also, these limited resources, I'm sorry, are also called factors of production. Factors of production are classified into four main categories, land, labor, capital, enterprise. We will get into that le uh, detail later on in the slides. So the basic economic problem. What is the basic economic problem? The basic economic problem is that the wants are unlimited, but the resources that we have are limited. And I would like you to also please note down this definition and make sure that you keep on noting down all of the definitions. Wherever you see this tag that says definition, this will help you right before your exams. So the basic economic problem is scarcity. Scarcity means when something is limited and when something is less in supply. So what that means is that the planet does not have enough resources to fulfill all of the desires that in all the human beings will ever have. So which is why the basic economic problem is scarcity. And because of scarcity, we need to choose and we need to make uh, better choices and we need to make choices which will lead to sustainability. So that is essentially what all economists are trying to do. They're trying to manage these resources in the best possible way. 
So in review, I would like to tell you that the basic economic problem is scarcity and which means that there are unlimited wants but limited resources. This is a very important topic. It is really, really easy, but you do get questions on it every single year. So uh, maybe a structured question or definitely a couple of MCQs on this. Let's take a look at some of your past paper questions now. Um, if you could look at your screens, economics textbook often textbooks sorry often start by identifying the existence of the basic economic problem. What is it that makes this problem basic? Okay, let's take a look at the options one by one. Option A is it affects all economies and individuals. B, it is the most urgent target of government economic policy. C, it only affects low income developing economies. It relates to the production of raw materials in the prim primary sector. Now, each, you have to be very careful in understanding that what they are asking you every time you read an MCQ. So, jab wo aap se basic economic problem pooch rahe hai, so basic koi cheez jab hoti hai when the entire subject is sort of built around it. And for that reason, the answer to this MCQ is option A. Is the reason that it's considered the basic economic problem is because it affects all economies and individuals. If you look at the rest of the options, they will, they are sort of talking about or targeting one particular area of economics. So they're either talking about the government economic policy or developing economies or primary sector. So therefore, they're not the correct options. What is the best example of the existence of the economic problem? A government produces accommodation for all those who are homeless. A police force has a lengthening list of unsolved crimes. Uh, Janita hands her homework in at the last permitted deadline. Musa completes his journey without putting petrol in his car. Now the correct option is B. And the reason that is the correct option is because the basic economic problem is that there are unlimited wants and limited resources. So the wants can't be met by those limited resources. So over here, the only sort of situation that is uh, depicting the economic problem is this one, is part B, because in all other scenarios, the, uh, the, the, the deadline is being met, the journey has ended, and the government has managed to find accommodation. So scarcity is not being depicted in any of these examples or options. Economic goods and free goods. So economic goods are goods that are that require resources to produce. So what that basically means is that you will need to get together some sort of resources to make economic goods. Like you would need to uh, to make this pen, you would need to get together some resources and then assemble them and then come up with this pen. But free goods are goods just like the name suggests that are available easily, uh, freely and readily for you to use and are basically natural resources. So sunshine, water, river, all of these are examples of free goods. Uh, this activity, decide whether each of the following is an economic or a free good. I, you should be able to solve this activity on your own. Just look at the options, air, education, newspapers, public library and state education. Out of all of these, air is a free good. And the reason that it is a free good is because you do not require resources to make air. You do not need to assemble resources together to make air. It's just there. It's available for you to use. Whereas all of these other resources, uh, all of these other, I'm sorry, goods require uh, uh, to be made and require resources to, for, the, for these goods to be made. So all of these are economic goods. 